Professional swimmers appear to cut through the water like fish, but looking at our bodies, we couldn't be less well suited at moving through the water if we tried. Today, we will be learning the science behind swimming. We will discuss the strokes of swimming, drag, buoyancy and Newton's laws. The different strokes of swimming include butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and freestyle. Within the strokes, the swimmer produces work energy by pulling and kicking. This work allows the body to move at a certain velocity through the water. Butterfly is performed face down in the water, while the legs perform a dolphin kick and the arms move in a forward, circular motion simultaneously with an above water recovery. Backstroke is done lying on the back, while one arm reaches behind the head to pull the water in a downward motion towards the waist while flutter kicking. Breaststroke is performed face down in the water without rotating the torso. The arms remain in the water pushing forward and pulling water in towards the chest in a semicircular motion while the legs perform a whip kick and the head dips in and out of the water. Freestyle is usually regarded as the fastest of all the strokes. It is done face down with alternating arms reaching ahead of the body and pulling water to the side, breathing between every couple of strokes while the legs simultaneously flutter kick. The pull of strokes provides a propulsive force that moves the swimmer down the pool. The kick propels the swimmer forward as well as balancing your stroke. It also reduces the vacuum or suction behind a swimmer. So when your feet break the surface tension of the water, it creates turbulence that makes it easier to move through the water. Drag can make a large difference in how well a swimmer moves through the water. The drag force is created by the motion of the swimmer through the water and resists the motion of the swimmer. For a swimmer swimming at a constant speed, the drag force is equal to the thrust force. The faster the object moves through the fluid, the greater the drag force. The drag of a swimmer can be broken down into pressure drag, skin friction drag and wave drag. Pressure drag or form drag is due to the swimmer pushing the water as they swim. Skin friction drag is due to the friction between the water and the swimmer's body. And wave drag is due to the surface waves produced by the swimmer. Swimsuits and swim caps can be used to decrease the coefficient of drag of the water over the body and give a streamlined flow to the water reducing the drag. As you float, your weight presses down into the water and the water presses back up, pushing you. When in the water, your body displaces the volume of the water, causing you to float. This happens by way of a buoyancy force that lifts the object. The principle behind the lift is called Archimedes principle, which states that an object, regardless of its shape, that is suspended in a fluid is acted upon by an upward buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the object. Newton's laws of motions are directly related to the forces that act upon the body when swimming. Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force, and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. This explains the concept of inertia. These two forces are static inertia and dynamic inertia. Static inertia is when your body is at rest and it must be overcome by a force before fluid movement can begin. This can be experienced when pushing off the side of a pool or the bottom of the pool. Dynamic inertia is when the moving body wants to stay moving, so if not for drag, it would keep moving. The interaction between the swimmer 
and water causes friction and slows the swimmer. Newton's second law of motion is the change of motion that depends on the magnitude of the force and the mass of the object. This explains why some people can swim faster than others because the person with the greatest force will travel the furthest distance. The swimmer must exert a certain amount of force to accelerate through the water and maintain a certain speed. Newton's third law of motion is that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This explains how the swimmer moves through the water. When the swimmer pulls and applies a force to the water and the water reacts to the force with an opposite force that pushes the swimmer forward. Before you leave, let's just go through a quick review on what we've talked about so far. An important thing that affects swimmers is drag. There are a number of different kinds of drag, but the most important thing to remember is that swimmers must minimize their drag to help them become faster and more effective swimmers. When swimming, you have a number of different forces acting on you at one time. There is thrust, which is the force you are creating to move yourself forward through the water. Drag is the opposing force which is working against you in the opposite direction. Thrust has to be greater than your drag for you to move forward. The other two forces are up or normal force, which is the force the water is pushing upwards against you. This force is counteracted by mg or gravity, which is pulling you downward at approximately 10 meters per second squared. The culmination of all of these forces working with and against each other are what move you through the water. Newton's Laws Relating to Swimming Law number one. Every object in a state of motion tends to remain in that state of motion unless acted upon by an external force. This law is also called law of inertia. Law number two. The relationship between an object's mass, m, its acceleration, a, and the applied force, f, is f equals m times a. Law number three. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When looking at swimming, the third law is the most important. The water applies an equal and opposite force to your body as you swim, which moves you forward but also keeps you afloat. So always remember, no matter what stroke you're swimming, physics always plays a key role. So, today we learned about the strokes of swimming, that drag and thrust play an important role in moving through the water, Archimedes' principle is why we float, and that Newton's laws can help explain why a swimmer moves forward and what forces are acting upon them.